Hi, this is Candace Garcia, Quality Manager in the Department of Radiology at Stanford University, and this is the Radiology Improvement Team Education Course. Today's discussion is on understanding the problem. Caring for patients is complex. There are many elements that have to come together at just the right time for any part of care to be delivered. Any variation in those elements could lead to a problem and often does. And so as complex as the environment is, so are the problems. Before we can improve anything, we must have a clear understanding of what the problem is and why it is occurring. Some of the tools we'll be discussing today are the five whys, which help us get to the root cause of a problem, cause and effect diagrams, which help us categorize contributing factors, and Pareto diagrams. These are histograms that show how often a problem happens due to a particular cause. All of these tools are designed to help us better understand our problem. So first, we looked at our current state, and then we start to look specifically at the problem in question. We do this by using the five whys. In most all situations, there are legitimate reasons for why things are the way that they are. And no, it's not just that my staff is a bunch of idiots. The five whys help us to get to the root cause of a problem. Just keep asking why until you figure it out. Let's look at a problem, for example. The Lincoln Monument is disintegrating. Now that's a pretty large problem to solve. So if we ask why a few times, we may get to a manageable solution that we can implement. So why is the monument disintegrating? Well, we use harsh chemicals to clean the monument. Well, that's a pretty good explanation and we could stop there by looking at our chemical process, maybe the brushes we use or how frequently we clean the monument, but sometimes it's important to just slow down, pause, and continue to dig a little deeper. So, why do they need harsh chemicals? Well, it turns out there's a lot of pigeon poop on the monument due to a lot of pigeons in the area. So why are there so many pigeons? Well, pigeons eat spiders and there's a lot of spiders at the monument. So why are there so many spiders? Well, spiders eat the gnats and there's a lot of gnats at the monument. So I think you know where we're going here. Why are there so many gnats at the monument? Well, turns out gnats are attracted to the light at dusk. And so when we really look at this problem, the monument is disintegrating, it's because of the chemicals, which are there because of the pigeon poop, which are there because of the pigeons, who are there because of the spiders, who are there because of the gnats, <laughs> who are there because they're attracted to the light. Now how do we know where to stop with the whys? Not every problem will re require five whys. Some will require two or three. Some will require seven or eight. It really is you get to the point where you still have a manageable solution. Now we could ask why do we turn the lights on at dusk? Well, the sun goes behind the earth and you can't see anymore. Now that's a problem that's a little large for us to solve. So I think for this example, we'll stop at the light. So when we look at our problem, to keep the monument from disintegrating, a reasonable solution may be to wait to turn the lights on until after dusk. But what's important to recognize is that the five whys is just a hypothesis. You may think that this is a problem, but you don't really know until you go and see and start to measure. So, cause and effect diagram, the second tool we're gonna look at today. What the cause and effect diagram will do is help you better understand your categories for cause. So what we do is we take our problem, we stick it in the fish's mouth, and then some common categories that would label the fish bones are methods, materials, people, measurements, machines, and environment. Now you can start listing the causes under each category, or alternatively, you may start with just randomly listing problems and then see what categories emerge. As you go through, the categories may change as you list more causes, so it's very flexible. Now, when looking at a problem, it's important to include both managers and workers. However, you may need to do this exercise separately so that every, everybody feels free to speak um, clearly about the problem. Everything that is discussed, however, is just a hypothesis. 
You'll be measuring all of these thoughts later, thus it's better to over-include than to under-include reasons for problems. There certainly will be some things that you thought were causes that will turn out to not be the case, and all of these things are okay at this point. So after you've done your five whys and the cause and effect diagram, it's, starting, it's time to start measuring the Pareto diagram. A Pareto diagram is a histogram that shows how often a problem happens due to a particular cause. This will give us a sense of where to initially devote our energy. Usually the majority of problems are due to a minority of causes, so it's important to remember when observing, we wanna let the process run how it normally runs. Just observe and track causes as they occur. Data may be observational, it may come from data sources, or it could be as simple as tick marks throughout a shift. It does not have to be exact, just good enough to get a sense of what the main causes of the problem are. So in summary, it's not enough to just hear about causes to a problem and look at the data. Every team member in the project should spend a significant amount of time observing the process, taking notes, and even using a stopwatch if necessary. Once a team has observed the process, you wanna identify causes and then observe the process some more then prioritize the causes, and then observe the process some more. Then, and only then, are you ready to start solving your problem. Thank you for watching. I'm Candace Garcia, and this is the Radiology Improvement Team Education Course at Stanford University.